Okay, okay, okay. It's going to be a difficult arrangement because I have to do this explanation on a horizontal surface. And so my camera is mounted in a bizarre way, hanging from the ceiling. Remember, this was the problem. I have a disc, a solid disc, let's say, but that's not important, radius 7R. And I have another disc with radius R. And I'm going to roll this small disc along the surface, all the way around, pure roll. And I want to know if this disc has gone around once, how many times has it rotated about its own axis? Pure roll. Let me remind you what is pure roll. You see this ball? This is pure roll. No slip. That is pure roll. Pure roll. Pure roll means, as I told you when I posted the problem, that if an object with radius r makes one full rotation, that it moves over a distance 2 pi r. An object only moves over a distance 2 pi r if the center of mass moves over that distance. So from here to here is 2 pi r. Which of course on a horizontal surface that is also from here to here. But what counts whether it is in pure roll is that the center of mass moves over a distance 2 pi r. Let's take this example now, which is to scale. Here we have a, a disk with radius 2r and here with r. And I'm going to rotate this one around this one with pure roll and I want to know how many rotations does it make. The center of that roll is at a distance 3r this is 3r from here and the circumference of this is therefore 6 pi r the circumference here is pi r the circumference here is 4 pi r but the circumference here is 6 pi r Sorry, this is 2 pi r. <laughs> All right, so this is 2 pi r. So, if I rotate this one around with pure roll, it takes 3 rotations. Because 6 divided by 2 is 3. You may not believe this. So I'm going to demonstrate it to you. I have here a disk which has a radius 2r. This little disc has a radius r and you see it fits twice. So this is exactly twice the radius of this little cup from here to here. I'm going to weigh this down with a piece of beautiful lead oxide, which I found in Australia in the 70s, with a piece of rhodonite here, because I don't want this to start moving. So, here is the piece with 1R, and here is the piece with 2R. The piece with 1R 
and the piece with two on. I hope you can see this line, which is on the two R disc and on the one R disc. Okay, now I'm going to rotate it to roll. I have to be careful because if I'm too rough, it will start to slip also. And if it slips, that's no longer Q roll. Notice that it has now made one full rotation. You see this line is parallel to this one. Notice it has now made one and a half rotation. You see this one is lined up with here and it went half way around and it rotated already one and a half times. Now it has rotated twice. Now it has rotated three times. If I'm not exact, it's probably because there was a teeny weeny little of slip. So it takes three rotations. I urge you to try this at home with two dishes, teacup dishes. They have the same radius. So if you do the experiment there, and you rotate one with radius R around the other one with radius R, it should take two rotations. It always adds one rotation. For the simple reason that I explained to you that the center of mass of the small disk rotates over a circle, or along the circle I should say, which has a radius 2R plus 1RM. Three rotations in this case. Three rotations in this case. And if you do this, it should take two rotations. All right, I hope that my camera is still hanging there. Bye bye. Take care. I hope this worked because I don't want to retake this.